The following is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Welcome back to Pseudo Sergeant. In this segment, I'm going to talk with you about the schematic design for the drum machine with the pocket Bella or the pocket beagle and Bella. It's broken up into six different sheets. There's uh, interconnects for the pocket beagle and Bella. There is the uh, button matrix for the input. There's actually two more matrices, one for the LED indicators and then the three digit seven segment display. Then there's also a sheet for the analog. There's a, um, a motor driven sliding potentiometer here. So, and then there's two uh, drum pads that are being, there's, there's piezos under here, they're on the sheet. And then there's also uh, the audio connections and the amplifier and then power. So. I think we should get to the uh, schematic and have a look at that. Okay, so let's take a look at the schematic design for the drum machine. I drew the schematic up in this program called KiCad. It's really awesome circuit design software. This is version 5. It's got the general public license, version 3. Um, it's been in development since the year 1992. Um, to get started, I had to compile this for the version that I have, but hopefully soon there'll be um, compiled versions of 5, which is the awesomest version of KiCad so far. And uh, what I needed to do was, since this is a Pocket Beagle project, I went and I found a Pocket Beagle Cape template. I downloaded and installed that so that I could have a nice template to work with. It would have all the connections of the Beagle Bone. So let's take a look at the schematic. So I made different sheets for different sections of the build. And um, the way KiCad keeps track of the sheets is with a hierarchical design. In this layout, there's the root, which is this sheet itself right here. Then um, underneath that, I've got the pocket beagle connections, which is right there. That's where I put the template, all the connections for the template. Then the three digit seven segment display is right there. Lead matrix is right here. Button matrix is right here. Uh, power and motor drivers right there. Analog amplifiers right here. Now let's uh, take a closer look here. So what I could do if I wanted to, I could put pins on these little rectangles here and I could have wires connecting, interconnecting the different sheets or to other devices out here, but I didn't necessarily want that. I used global connections in between the sheets. Let's start with the Pocket Beagle Bell connections. This is pretty much, well actually it was just these two connectors, the P1 and P2 header that were in the template, but I added these USB headers, um, a 10-pin uh, header, and uh, two 3-pin connections there for the, the Bella. Now I don't really use much of anything on the P1 except for the USB connections and that's because there's USB on the Bella. So I just added that connector here and then also added the USB connector as well. And the one that's already on the Pocket Beagle. So then most of the connections are over here on the P2 header. So we're using SPY1 with the data out, data in, and clock connected to the uh, master out, slave in is connected to the data out. Master in, slave out is connected to the data in. And then clock is connected to the clock. Man, these labels are different. This is supposed to be an out. And this is supposed to be out. This is supposed to be out. Okay. So we have, I should save that, make sure that stays persistent. So then over here we have our motor driver and then motor driver enable, those are outputs. And then soft power button, that's an input. And then we had load and latch. These are just g regular GPIO. And then you have soft power button, that's an input. And then we have the motor PWM, that's an output. This is a PWM pin. And this soft power, this is the reset. And then this is the power button. So then over here, we've got the piezo zero and piezo one in the slider. This is an analog connection on the Bella. And then we have the voltage reference. Those are the piezo zero and piezo one are drum pads and then slider is an analog uh, potentiometer. Then there are these two audio connections. There's audio in left, audio in right, audio out left, audio right, and they have a common ground. Then the USB. 
So these are all the connections for the Pocket Beagle um, Bella. So let's look at the seven second display. We have our display here with our three digits. We have PMP transistors, NPN transistors, and two shift registers. The shift registers have, uh, well this one has data, is connected to the data, the data out of the Pocket Beagle and then also clock and latch of the Pocket Beagle. The Q8, the, the not Q is going to the next shift register, the 74HC595, and it goes to the serial in. So this is gets its serial in from the previous shift register rather than the Pocket Beagle. And we have them daisy chained together. And it also has the same clock and latch signal. This has three of the three of the outputs here are being are connected to the PNP transistors, and then these eight outputs are connected to the NPN transistors. And then the the output, the uh, Q naught, is going to the data LED matrix. We'll get to that in a moment, but let's take a look at this further. So the outputs of the first shift register are connected to the base of the PNP transistors through a 1K ohm resistor, and the base of the PNP transistors are pulled to 5 volts through a 10K resistor. The um, emitter of the NPN transistor is connected to 5 volts, and when the base of the transistor is Put to low voltage, it will allow a connection between the emitter and the collector, which is connected to the anode of the three-digit seven-segment display. So we have common anode, and each one of these anodes is connected to the collectors of these three transistors. So that's the TOT5361BR three-digit seven-segment LED display. And then each one of the elements in this display has a pin, an A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then the decimal point. They are connected through a 300 ohm resistor, current limiting resistor, so they won't burn out the LED in the display, to a NPN transistor, the collector of the NPN transistor, and the emitter of the NPN transistors go to ground. Then the base is connected to a 1K transistor and also pulled to ground through a 10K transistor, and then that goes into our shift register. So that is an overview of the connections for the three-digit seven-segment LED. Let's take a look now at the LED matrix. Pretty much the same setup as, as in the three-digit seven-segment display. We have two 74HC595 shift registers connected in the same similar fashion. They're, they're connected to the Pocket Beagle, but they don't get data from the Pocket Beagle. They get data from the uh, previous shift register and um, you see there's the NPN, uh, PNP transistors here and the NPN transistors there. They connected the 5 volts up there and then ground over here. Instead of the um, display we have all these uh, indicator lights. And you notice in this row it's, a, it's slightly different. We have PNP transistors here. And the idea is that when this row is on and depending on which column is on will turn on these transistors, which will then send a signal. The first five in this row will send a signal to a, the switch matrix row, row 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And then we have these, these extra auxiliary outputs here that are not connected. They're actually not connected to anything, but I could connect them up to, I don't know, something that might require higher current or a different matrix or something. I'm not sure yet, but uh, that has yet to be tested. I still got to program that yet. Again here, we have all the connections. We have data coming in from the LED matrix. Actually, the data is coming in from the uh, seven segment display matrix. Then we have clock, latch, same here, clock, latch, and then there are these two are daisy chained together. And then we have our eight outputs, they're all being used. So we have eight columns here, or, I'm sorry, eight rows here. And then we have all the outputs on this shift register connected to these columns. We have eight columns there. And as before, the PMP transistors are connected to the shift register via a 1k ohm resistor and then pulled high through it with a 10k resistor and then likewise our NPN transistors are pulled low the bases are pulled low through a 10k resistor right there that's pulled low and then with a 1k resistor through 1k resistor they are connected to the shift register okay so that's an overview our, our LED matrix keep in mind that these five transistors are outputting to the rows of our our button matrix. 
let's go take a look at the button matrix right here. All right, so there's the f input for the five different rows here. There's the signal for the five different rows. Um, switch matrix row 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now we have a 74LS165 uh, shift register, which is connected to the load and clock of the pocket beagle. And then the output is connected to the data in of the pocket beagle. And then our eight signals of the shift register are connected to these eight columns. And each one of these columns consists of five buttons and the button it's just a tag switch with that goes through a um, zener diode for isolation so we know exactly which button is being pressed in the matrix and then you notice it's kind of a little different up here so instead of tag switches we have toggle switches here and then we have these rotary encoders right here the way a rotary encoder works is there's a common and then two um, contacts and depending on which direction it's turning one will be contacted before the other one which then a microcontroller can interpret which direction the rotary encoder is turning and since those are just contacts I treat them like switches and just put them through um, isolate them with uh, the diodes there may be some issues with how fast the spy can transmit signals and read what the position of the um, rotary encoder is here but you know, we still have to work that out in programming. And this one's slightly different. It's got uh, common and then two switches and then also it can rotate and then it's also a button that can be pressed. So that's how that works. There's the button matrix. All right, our analog and amplifier schematic here. Um, here's the amplifier. Here's some speakers that are right on the, the unit. We have... Um, quarter inch connectors and then a potentiometer here a dual potentiometer and then we have these are outputs these are input jacks so output jacks input jacks these are drum pads there there's just piezos and then over here is the um, potentiometer the sliding potentiometer motorized sliding potentiometer so let's take a look at this amplifier this amplifier is a little bit more than i really need here because you use something smaller because it's not outputting anything it's just up to these two little speakers and this is a dip switch, we can adjust the gain. There's audio out left, audio out right coming from the Bella, and then analog ground, um, potentiometer. Then there's three jacks here, audio left, audio out right, and then the stereo audio out, those quarter inch jacks. And then here's our audio in left, audio in right, so we can bring sound into the uh, Bella with these um, quarter inch jacks. This, these are our drum pads. Each, each drum pad is a piezo, connected uh, across a voltage divider between voltage reference and ground it's that and then it goes the signal goes out to the piezo which is well it's a piezo connection that goes out to the um, uh, pocket beagle then over here we have the voltage reference and ground then the sliders and then this is our 10k motorized uh, sliding potentiometer so the slider this goes out this goes to the voltage reference Oh, actually, this uh, this should be output. There. So there's the analog at what we have left is the power and motor driver. So here, here's our our voltage regulators, motor driver, and our power buttons, power and reset button. So right here we have our mains power, 12 volts AC. Goes to our voltage or uh, AC to DC uh, converter there or regulator. Then we have um, uh, a 5 volt regulator and a 3 volt regulator. So we have 12, 5, and 3 volts in the system here. And here's our soft power button for the soft power and then our soft reset button. Okay, then here's our motor driver. Our motor driver connected to the PWM pin, motor direction, and then motor enable. And then the two motor contacts terminals so we have three volts five three volts for logic five volts for the motor and then ground all right there's our connections there all right so that's everything in our schematic pretty cool huh well that was an overview of the schematic design which shows all the connections inside the drum machine if you have any comments questions recommendations advice suggestions or anything else to say please visit element14.com forward slash pseudosergeant and i'll see you on the command line have fun and stuff